from RF Smart. This is Taking Inventory, a podcast all about better controlling your supply chain and improving inventory management. Now your host, Abby Bennett. Welcome back to Taking Inventory. I'm your host, Abby Bennett. This being our first podcast of 2024, I hope you all had a wonderful new year. We are starting this new season of Taking Inventory strong by tackling one of the most complex and sometimes daunting pieces of inventory control for the companies we work with which is the implementation of new warehouse management and supply chain softwares. I am joined by two teammates who are going to help break down some of that trepidation. Our in-house experts, Kristen St. John, Practice Director of our NetSuite services here at RF Smart, and Misty Price, one of our senior implementation consultants. They're going to walk you through all you need to know about an RF Smart implementation and how you can begin planning for this process. Kristen and Misty, welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks, Abby. Before we get started, please just take a moment and introduce yourself and your role at RF Smart. Misty, you're one of the veterans of our podcast. We'll start with you. Thanks. I'm Misty Price. I've been here at RF Smart for a little over six years, and I implement new NetSuite projects. Excellent. Kristen? I am Kristen St. John. I've been here almost six years. I am responsible for all of NetSuite services implementations, primarily for the operational and the financial side. Well, thank you both again for joining today. I want to start this conversation by focusing on the mindset behind these implementations. For those of you who are frequent listeners of the podcast, you know that here at RF Smart, our mission is to transform our customers and change lives. And that's the guiding principle behind all of our business processes. Kristen, let me ask you, how do you ensure that we keep our implementations mission-driven for each customer and ensure that positive experience? It really is important to us. As you said, our mission is we want to transform our customers' lives and their business. And so that's something that we always keep in mind when we're going through the implementations. We're absolutely crazy for our customers. We're going to do what we can to support them. Even sometimes that includes telling them things that they don't want to hear. But we're here to make sure that it's a successful implementation and our customers have a great experience because that is the goal, is we really do want to have a positive impact on their business and on their employees' lives. Now that we have that background, can you give listeners a peek into what comes before a software implementation with RF Smart? Sure. And that's actually a great question. So there is a ton of work that goes on before someone even becomes a customer. We are fortunate. We have a great sales team and we get to work very closely with them. So the sales team has that initial contact with the customer, but there's a lot of information that's being shared back and forth. We're given visibility into what's coming down the pipeline, what customers are coming, what their processes are. And then for a good number of those customers, we're actually pulled in. We get the opportunity to meet with the customer, to understand their processes, their challenges before they even sign to help solution out what we're going to do for them. And that also allows us to build a timeline. So we want to provide as much information as we can to the customer. By the time a customer actually signs, we have a lot of information about their account. And even those accounts that we're not able to meet with, there is a sales to service that's happening. That's knowledge transfer. The sales team is transferring all the information that they've gathered through the whole sales cycle to the implementation consultant. We're not starting from ground zero. We already know a lot about the account before we even start. Kristen, I think an interesting thing you noted there is that you guys are involved even before the sale may take place. You're solutioning through that process to make sure they're getting the right solutions, the right functionality added, which ultimately helps that implementation process be a lot smoother for the customer. Walk us through that high level. What does the implementation process entail and what are your team's responsibilities with the customer? We ultimately want to make sure that the customer walks away understanding how to use our software and that it has an impact on their business. The most important session we have is a business process review, and that's where the services team will do a deep dive into the customer's processes, into the details. And so we want to walk away from that with a good plan for their implementation. The customer is not a spectator. They're involved with us. It's hands-on. And the one thing to point out, it's a partnership. We both have to be involved to make it successful. And so we try to encourage that throughout the implementation. Misty, let's hear from you. Can you walk us through an overview of what that implementation process looks like from your perspective? Yeah, we take a train the trainer approach and we're doing all of our training sessions in your environment and the customer is driving and we're navigating them. We tell you exactly what you need to do and we're testing in your NetSuite environment to ensure that there's no conflicts and that nothing pops up that would possibly interfere with RF Smart. 
So it's not, let's just get on a call and do a training session and then you forget about it until it's time to go live. The whole implementation is very fluid and the customer should be actively testing in their sandbox environment to ensure for a successful go live. You talked about it being a fluid process or really meeting the customer's needs and expectations and the things that they're looking for. A lot of that happens during that business process review. Why is it so important for our customers in preparing for a smooth implementation to have that business process review right up front? Great question. This business process review is designed for us to really get to know your business, your processes, and how we can tailor our implementation to your needs. It's a result of a questionnaire that we sent out that has quite a few questions on it, but the customer fills it out. And then we set up our demo environment with transactions to mimic what they're going to be doing. Same item types, same types of transactions. And we walk through the major functionality in RF Smart. And that allows us to have a clear understanding of the business process. And it also identifies any potential customizations or modifications that might be required. And since we've been doing this business process review for the past few years, we have seen a definite success with less customizations prior to go live. What we don't want to do is have a new requirement pop up a month before go live and potentially delay that for the customer. Absolutely. And that brings into the idea of expectations, how they're going to use the product and how they can be successful from go live on. One of the questions we hear all the time is timeline. They know they need to implement, they know they need the functionality, but they needed it yesterday. So how do we navigate the different timelines, which things go live first versus later? How do you prioritize those? That is something that comes up frequently. There's a lot of timelines that we're trying to hit. As Misty mentioned, the business review, that is where we really understand what's important to you. And we use that information to cater. Are you wanting to just go live on receiving? Do you need to do countings? We're finding out what's important and what timelines are you trying to hit. And our implementation process is flexible enough that we can cater those sessions to you. We actually will show you all the different sessions that we're going to have, and then we can arrange those for you. And we actually have the ability to schedule out your whole implementation right after that review. That will allow you to schedule resources that are needed. We want you to be prepared. And a lot of it has to do with the customer's resource availability or the customer's bandwidth. One of the things I was so excited to hear about as we were prepping for this conversation and something I've heard from customers is that we offer such a flexible approach. There are always different things to consider. Some customers may need it here to go live. Some may want to go live all at once. How do we as a team help customers navigate that decision? Well, of course, we want our customers to be getting their value, right? Sometimes it is best to take a phased approach for a go live. Maybe just getting a customer live with receiving and counting, and then we can do manufacturing and picking as phase two. It's really just driven off of the customer's bandwidth and availability. The customer can drive the speed of the implementation. I get this question a lot from customers is, how long do we have you for, Misty? We're here, we're on your timeline. If you want to take a phased approach, I can stay with you until that phased approach is complete or we can transition you to customer support. But the customer is in charge of that decision. So there's no timeline for how long you have your implementation consultant. We're really just on your timeline, but obviously we want to encourage you to get using the system as quickly as possible so you're getting value for what you're paying. I know that's been a huge value add to the users we now have on our product, being able to feel like they have control, but also support from our team. So it's a great partnership in that way. Another huge piece of this is not just getting the functionality live, but it's really making sure that our users are prepared as they are no longer in implementation and they're live on the product and they're ready to get in that warehouse and get production going. How do we approach training when it comes to our services? What does that look like for our customers? So as soon as we have the kickoff call with the customer, we send out the homework for all of the training sessions so that they can get ahead of that and have that prepared. Nothing crazy, usually about a half hour of homework in between each session. And it will tell you exactly what you need to do for prepping your orders and how to set them up. And then obviously we'll do the training session. And in between the sessions, we want to be testing as much as possible in the sandbox. We want to make sure that the customer is confident in the software and understands how to use it. And another great thing that I love personally doing as implementation consultant is when we get on a training session, I like to recap what we talked about previously and ask them how their training was going and make sure that they're comfortable before we move on to the next subject. How do we encourage that success from the start of this process all the way to the end? That's obviously very important to us. 
like I said, we want the customer to partner with us. So there's going to be participation in both sides. One of the things that we do is we look to see what's been done. We want to see that customers are using our product when they're doing things on their own is usually when they're going to come up with questions or run into problems. And to Misty's point, that's one of the first things we ask when we get on those sessions is to make sure that we can address those concerns for them. The customer really needs to be doing some work on their own, not just when they're in sessions with us. We are going to make sure that they're ready. And if we see that they're not, we're going to raise that flag. That's one thing that we feel is like doing right by the customer, having their back. If they don't see a problem coming, we will see it and we will let them know. Obviously, the the primary goal is to get the customer live, but we also want to make sure that once they're live, that they don't have any issues using the software. So one of the things that we do look at, we monitor support cases, we monitor usage, and we're going to keep them in the services team until we're sure that they're not having any issues and we feel like they're ready to move over to our customer success team. We talk about training. We talk about success of the product. A thing I'd love to share with listeners who may not know if they haven't gone through one of our implementations is that we ensure user success by preparing for very specific use cases that these customers may encounter. Part of it happens during the business process review, but as we get to know the customer through the sales cycle and beyond, We want to pick up those use cases and prepare them for those individual tasks and scenarios that they're going to go through. Can you walk us through what that may look like for a customer going through implementation? Sure. And this is a good question. We start this even in the sales cycle. So when we get the opportunity to talk to customers in the sales cycle, that's where we will first bring up use cases. That is a key part of the implementation. As a customer, you know your business better than we do. So there's a lot of use cases that we'll introduce and we'll give you, but The customer is the one that knows the edge cases, their day-to-day. So we want to make sure that we have those documented. And when we're doing the implementation, we'll go through those cases, especially those one-offs. Those are the ones that can sometimes kill an implementation. And so we want to make sure that we're addressing those before the customer goes live. I always tell my customers, try to break the system, right? So if you're going to do testing, you want to test orders like you're going to have in real life. All of those weird edge cases, drop ship orders and unique cases, credit card holds, anything that you encounter on a day-to-day NetSuite, we want you to test that in RFSmart. And the goal is to break the system because we want to find the problems now so they're not problems for go live. Not just happy path testing. I love that. Not just happy path. And I'm sure everyone who's gone through an implementation is shaking their head. Yes. As someone who's talking to customers on a very consistent basis, hearing their stories, learning about their partnership with RF Smart, a consistent theme is the training was great. I'm getting the information I need when I need it. I'm continuing to be supported. So that's just a kudos and shout out to your team for doing the work well and doing it customer focused. Yeah, that's awesome. Another great thing that I think our company does is After a go live, our executive team will check in with the customer six months to a year after they go live, and they'll ask them, how was your implementation? What were the pain points? How was your sales process? How is support? And getting that feedback from the customer and seeing it, and a lot of times it's really good feedback, and it's very rewarding to be in the shop and to know that you could take a company and you have their livelihood on your shoulders and you can make their life easier and allow them to grow because you've helped them with the implementation. So that's the favorite part about my job that I love. That's really great to hear. I think it validates what the processes are that we have and the people that we have. We have a great team of consultants with many, many, many years of real world knowledge in the field. So it's great to hear that our customers recognize that and that they feel supported because at the end of the day, that's really what we're looking to see. Absolutely. Kristen and Misty, I want to thank you for sharing and really giving us a view into how transforming our customers and changing life starts from the day they prepare for Go Live on throughout their experience. I hope our listeners enjoyed hearing about this. And if you have questions about what this may look like for your business, are interested in learning more about the process, please email us at info at rfsmart.com. We'd be more than happy to get you in touch with some of our resources. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, including Google, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or at our website, rfsmart.com slash podcast, where you can sign up to get email notifications each time we put out a new episode. Thank you all for listening and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for having me, Abby. This is really fun. Thanks, Abby.